A shocking truth lies beneath one of Australia's most magnificent structures, Perth's Optus Stadium, a gleaming arena that hosts thousands of cheering fans, stands on what was once a highly toxic dump. This wasn't just any old landfill, it was a hazardous mix of asbestos, old car bodies, industrial waste and a dangerous cocktail of cinder ash, biosolids and acid sulfate soils, reaching depths of 30 metres. To build this colossal venue, engineers plunged over 2,600 concrete piles, each one driven 35 metres deep into the earth. That's like pushing a pencil through 10 stacked double-decker buses just to find solid ground. They poured enough concrete to fill 21 Olympic-sized swimming pools into the site, creating a stable base for a structure weighing 7,500 tonnes in steel alone. How did they manage to pull off this seemingly impossible feat, transforming a poisoned wasteland into a world-class engineering marvel? For many years, the Burswood Peninsula was a forgotten, scarred area along Perth's beautiful Swan River. It served as a sprawling landfill, a final resting place for the city's unwanted materials, from old vehicles to dangerous asbestos. Tests on the soil revealed a truly alarming mix of cinder ash, biosolids and acid sulfate soils, making it a hazardous foundation for any major construction. The idea of building a grand stadium here seemed completely out of the question. Already had Subiaco Oval, a stadium that had served its purpose since 1908. While it could hold 43,000 fans, it was showing its age. Fans often complained about cramped seating and limited facilities, and it simply didn't have the modern sparkle needed to attract big international events. The city dreamed of a new, state-of-the-art venue that would truly put Perth on the global map and attract major sports and, and entertainment events. Despite the environmental nightmare, the Burswood site offered a compelling advantage, its picturesque location along the Swan River, close to the city centre. It had the potential to become a vibrant entertainment hub, a blank canvas for something truly iconic. The government believed that starting fresh on this site would allow them to create a landmark venue with better transport options and room for future growth, even if it meant tackling immense clean-up challenges. But how do you take a contaminated time bomb and turn it into a gleaming symbol of progress? The first and most critical hurdle was the ground itself. The Burswood Peninsula site was an engineer's worst nightmare, a former landfill filled with all sorts of dangerous materials. Investigations found that the top eight meters of the ground were a chaotic mix of concrete, fly ash, old car bodies, and even household appliances. Beneath this layer, extending down another 25 meters, was soft, squishy estuarine sediment known as Swan River Alluvium, which naturally produces ground gases like methane and carbon dioxide. The presence of acid sulfate soils was a particularly serious concern. When these soils are exposed to air, they undergo a chemical reaction that produces sulfuric acid. This acid can significantly lower the pH of groundwater, making it highly acidic and causing dangerous heavy metals like cadmium, lead, arsenic and aluminium to dissolve and move through the soil. This acidic water can then degrade the quality of the Swan River and even corrode concrete and steel structures, threatening the very foundation and long-term stability of the stadium. Preventing this environmental and structural damage was a top priority for the engineers. To make the ground safe and stable enough to support a massive stadium, engineers employed a combination of ingenious techniques. Over 2,600 concrete piles were driven an impressive 36 meters deep into the earth. These piles acted like giant stilts, bypassing the hazardous layers of fill and soft river mud to reach stable bedrock far below. This deep foundation was essential not just for bearing the stadium's immense weight, but also for preventing future settlement of the ground and stopping contaminants from moving into the surrounding environment. A 20,000 square meter area within the stadium park underwent a process called dynamic compaction. This involved cranes dropping heavy weights to shake the ground, collapsing any hidden voids or empty spaces left by old car bodies or buried rubbish. To help water drain faster from the soft soil, 
Over 8,000 square meters of vertical drains were installed. However, this wasn't straightforward. Engineers often had to pre-punch holes because of buried rubbish blocking the installation of the drains. One of the most innovative solutions involved the use of over 10,000 controlled modulus columns, or CMCs, across a 60,000 square meter area. These are like rigid underground columns that strengthen the soft ground without the need for traditional methods like pre-loading, which could have pushed contaminants into the Swan River. Perth Stadium was one of the first major projects in Western Australia to use CMCs to such an extensive degree. And it even holds the record for some of the longest CMC columns ever installed. Additionally, over 2,700 square meters of sheet piling, acting like underground metal walls, were put in place to further prevent any contaminants from creeping into the Swan River. In total, over 30,000 cubic meters of concrete were used just for these ground improvements. That's almost a third of all the concrete used for the entire stadium structure. Another invisible threat came from ground gases. Landfill sites often release gases like methane and carbon dioxide, which can be dangerous if they build up. Perth's warm climate meant that common gas barriers used in other cities wouldn't work effectively. So, engineers had to adapt. They innovatively used an existing product, the Enviro HP1600 waterproofing membrane, as a gas barrier. This was the first time this product had been used on such a huge scale for gas mitigation in Western Australia. Once the ground was tamed, the real monster began to rise from the earth. Optus Stadium is a six-level structure of steel and concrete, reaching a height of 42 meters. That's as tall as a 14-story building. The stadium's backbone is an incredible 7,500 tons of blue scope steel. To give you an idea of the scale, that's roughly the weight of 1,250 elephants. This massive amount of steel includes 4,500 tons of huge welded beams and columns and 3,000 tons of special structural steel. Over 15,000 individual steel parts were custom made and fitted together to form this monumental skeleton. Prominence part of the construction involved the fabrication and installation of 50 massive steel roof trusses. These trusses were prefabricated off-site at Sivmec in nearby Henderson, then transported to the stadium where cladding elements, including the fabric roof modules, were added. This allowed them to be craned into place as single, enormous units. This, just in time, delivery and assembly process was a key logistical innovation, with nine trusses being assembled on the ground while one was being lifted into place. This parallel construction methodology allowed for rapid progress and minimized complexity on the challenging site, helping to meet tight deadlines. One of the most eye-catching features of the stadium is its halo roof, designed to look like it's floating above the seats. This impressive roof covers an amazing 85% of the 60,000 seats, protecting fans from rain or harsh sun. It's built from a double layer of special fabric supported by those 50 massive triangular steel trusses. Each of these trusses, the design of the roof, particularly the use of a veer and deal truss design in its bottom webs, is a sophisticated engineering choice. This specific design provides lateral stiffness without needing diagonal bracing, which not only saves steel, but also helps prevent a domino effect if one part of the structure were to fail. The stadium's outside skin is a stunning bronze-colored aluminium designed to reflect Western Australia's unique geology. But it's at night that it truly comes alive. A state-of-the-art LED lighting system featuring over 15,000 lights can display the home team's colors, turning the entire stadium into a giant pulsating light show. This lighting system has also been used for powerful cultural displays like the Bilia, an Aboriginal light show that tells the cultural narrative of Wajuk country. Optus Stadium wasn't just built for sports, it was designed with a fan-first approach, aiming to create an unparalleled experience. The stadium boasts a colossal seating bowl 
that can hold 60,000 people, making it the third largest stadium in Australia. But its capacity is flexible. For rectangular sports like soccer or rugby, it can expand to 65,000 seats. And for concerts, it can pack in an incredible 70,000 people. That's like filling a small town inside a stadium. This flexibility allows the stadium to host a wide range of events beyond just Australian rules football, maximizing revenue streams and making the massive investment more viable. The seating bowl itself is shaped like a coliseum, ensuring every single seat offers amazing, unobstructed views of the action. The playing field measures 165 meters long and 130 meters wide, very similar to the famous Melbourne cricket ground and is even oriented east-west, just like the MCG, to help with sun angles. In today's connected world, staying online is crucial. The entire stadium has full 4G mobile coverage, and with over 1,400 Wi-Fi hotspots, fans can stream, share, and post without a hitch. You won't miss a single play, even if you're grabbing a snack, as there are over 1,000 TV screens strategically placed all around the venue, all controlled from a central room. For the biggest views, two giant screens, each 340 square meters, light up the stadium. That's like having two tennis courts showing the game. These are the largest screens in any sporting venue in the Southern Hemisphere. Beyond the fan experience, the stadium incorporates smart and safe technologies. It uses a high-level CCTV security system, a first for an Australian stadium ensuring everyone's safety. During its design and construction, Advanced Building Information Modeling, or BIM, was used to level 500. This acts like a digital twin of the stadium, where every single asset is tagged with a QR code and linked back to the BIM model and its database. So, the stadium was built as a public-private partnership, or PPP, with the West Stadium Consortium a group of companies responsible for designing, building, financing and maintaining the stadium for 25 years. The initial cost estimate was around $700 million for the stadium itself, with an extra $300 million allocated for transport upgrades. But like many large-scale projects, the numbers quickly exploded. By 2015, the estimated cost jumped to $1.5 billion and by 2018, it soared to at least $1.8 billion, nearly double the original budget. The significant cost overruns, coupled with the fact that neither the federal government nor the Australian Football League contributed as hoped, meant the entire financial burden fell squarely on Western Australian taxpayers. This amounted to an average cost of around $1,500 per household. Compartments the project was also met with storms of controversy. Despite the incredible engineering feats to clean up the site, the choice to build on a former toxic dump remained a sore point for many. There were constant worries about disturbing the soil and potentially releasing contaminants into the Swan River, even with all the mitigation efforts. The Burswood Peninsula holds deep historical and cultural importance for the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation, the traditional landowners. The decision to develop this land into a commercial sports venue was met with strong resistance from indigenous groups who felt their heritage was being pushed aside in the name of progress. Despite consultations, many felt their concerns were not adequately addressed, leading to protests and public outcry. However, the project has also seen significant efforts to integrate Noongar culture into the stadium's design and surrounding parkland. This includes the Kaya poem, meaning hello or yes, etched into 68 concrete panels around the stadium's podium level, interweaving Noongar prose with English text. Two 4.2-metre cast bronze message sticks by Aboriginal artist Barry Maguire are located in the stadium park, reflecting their traditional use to bring people together. More recently, the stadium's LED lighting system has been used for powerful Aboriginal light shows, telling cultural narratives of Wajuk country. Another major point of contention was the stadium's name. Initially, it was simply Perth Stadium, a straightforward name reflecting its location. But then, telecom giant Optus swooped in, paying over $50 million for the naming rights for 10 years. 
This sparked outrage from many locals and politicians who felt a public asset was sold to the highest bidder, compromising its civic identity. The controversy was further fueled when Optus faced a major data breach, leading to calls from some politicians to strip the company of its naming rights, arguing that the association tarnished the stadium's reputation. Finally, the stadium's location demanded massive upgrades to Perth's transport network. This included building a new six-platform train station, Perth Stadium Station, a 22-stand bus station, and the iconic Matagarup Bridge, a pedestrian bridge spanning the Swan River. These extensive upgrades were designed to move an impressive 83% of a capacity crowd out of the stadium within one hour of an event. What other hidden engineering marvels do you want us to uncover next? If you were amazed by the story of Optus Stadium, hit that like button. Subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more incredible engineering deep dives. Leave a comment below with your thoughts and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video.